reasons I don't have to go into today, but it's arbitrary. You can't derive it from the laws of physics. You can drive a snowflake from the laws of physics, but you can't drive the, DNA, uh, the genetic code from the laws of physics. So, is DNA a pattern like stalactites and stalagmites and uh, tornadoes and hurricanes, or is it a code like English, Chinese, visual, basic, ASCII? Well, DNA, a DNA molecule symbolically represents something other than itself. It's clearly the latter. It's a code. Now, since Lucent is a, is a grandchild of Bell Labs, surely many of you are also familiar with this book, or this paper by Claude Shannon called The Mathematical Theory of Communication. You guys familiar with this book? Kind of a classic, published in 1948. Now, this is really profound. I mean, I think this is one of the most important books in the history of electrical engineering. I mean, what this guy really did was he figured out how much data can you shove through a 56K modem? How much data can you shove through a T1 line? Okay? How much redundancy do you need if there's X amount of noise on that 56K modem? How much redundancy do you need so the data arrives intact? And he formulated all of this like before he even had a scientific calculator. It's absolutely brilliant. Okay? Now, what you have here is Shannon's fundamental unit of communication. You have, uh, you have on the left side an encoder. In the middle, you have a code passing through a channel with noise being introduced. And on the right side, you have a decoder. Okay? And, um, and th this is the fundamental uh, mechanism of communication. You have to have all three or you don't have communication. So you have, to, you have to have a code where a whole bunch of choices have to be made in advance. What does a letter mean? What does a word mean? What are the layers? What's the, what's the syntax? What's the semantics of the code? And then you have to have an encoder that follows the, that rules as it takes information and encodes it into a signal. And then the decoder has to do all of that in reverse. And un unless you have all those three things all at once, you do not have a successful instance of communication. Now, I want to show you a picture from another book. This book is called Information Theory, Evolution, and the Origin of Life by Hubert Yaki. This is published by Cambridge University Press in 2005. Yaki is the world's foremost authority on bioinformatics. And Yaki has this table in his book. And he explicitly points out that it's identical to Shannon's communication system. On the left, so, so let me explain what this is. It's not really clear just from reading it what this is. Let, let me explain what he's describing here. He's describing the, the decoding and transcription of DNA as it actually is read and turned into an organism. And what happens is the, 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 the DNA um, is encoded in the transcription process to the M to the messenger RNA alphabet and it, it turns into mRNA and you can read this in any biology book and messenger RNA is decoded into proteins and there's a table that you can look up in any biology book that starts with it starts with the the base pairs of DNA, and then it goes to a table of messenger RNA, which translates to proteins. It's fundamentally no different than an ASCII table that matches, you know, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2 is A, or I don't know if I got it exactly right, but, you know, 0, 0, 1, 1 is B, and so on. It's the same thing. It's a code. And a code is a unique mapping 
of, of something in space A to something in space B, um, where you know the word coffee does not mean goat. It means coffee. It means you know beverage that you drink. Um, the word stop means stop. The word stop does not mean go. The word go means go. The word go does not mean stop. And so Yaki points out that the transcription process of DNA is identical to a, um, to a Shannon communication model. He also points out, for those of you who are interested in Turing, it's also uh, essentially identical to a Turing machine. Um, and, uh, and so uh, what Yaki points out in his book is that there is no such thing in the laws of physics as a set of rules that explains how you get a code. Doesn't exist. Like I said earlier, you can't derive um, the, the rules of the genetic code from the laws of physics. So where do codes come from? Patterns occur naturally. Random processes, to anybody's knowledge, do not create codes. And nobody has ever discovered a code that was not ultimately designed by somebody or is a derivative of another code. I do not know of any exception to this. Um, I've actually been presenting this to people and debating this for three years, and nobody's found an exception. So, this communication system is the fundamental unit of biology, um, a communication system with encoder, code, and decoder. And it's irreducibly complex by definition. All three units have to be in place or you don't have any kind of reproduction. And so, uh, the, in, in terms of the origin of life, where did, where did life come from? Where did the first living cell come from? Uh, John von Neumann, a famous computer guy around 1950, he realized that all self-replicating machines require code. If a machine is going to make a copy of itself, it has to have an abstract representation of itself in order to know what to make a copy of. In the purely natural world, nothing ever makes a copy of itself. That's why snowflakes are not identical because they're not made from a plant. They're made by chaos. Um, and so von Neumann just realized what's true of, uh, in biology already is you, you have to have a code in order to have reproduction. And any such cell would have, it would have to have both cell functions and a code that symbolizes them at the same time in order to reproduce. Codes are symbolic and arbitrary, like I said, not derivable from the laws of physics. So nothing in the purely physical world that anybody knows of creates plans, instructions, codes, or symbols. Um, Norbert uh, Wiener was a MIT mathematician. He was one of Claude Shannon's contemporaries. Uh, he wrote a number of books on, uh, on uh, cybernetics. He's got a book called Cybernetics, very interesting book. He said a very interesting thing. Information is information. It is not matter or energy, and no materialism which does not admit this can survive at the present day. Now, let's just stop and, and think about what he is saying. He is saying that there are not two entities in the universe, matter and energy, there's three. There's matter, energy, and information, and you can't derive information from matter and energy. Information always comes from intelligence. There's no known exceptions to this. Okay? And so what he's saying is a materialistic view of the universe cannot survive what we know about information. Now he said this in probably 1950, something like that, 1960. Now back then people did not, were not swimming in a world of messages flying all over the place, but we do now. Okay? Every single file format on your computer, DLL, XLS, 
doc, um, HTML, PHP, ASP.